Project Rulison, the nuclear stimulation of a tight gas-bearing formation in western Colorado, marked the entry of the Los Alamos Scientific Laboratory into the Atomic Energy Commission's plowshare program. Los Alamos set out to provide, in place, stem and fire the nuclear explosive as economically as possible. This film will be short and to the point, because that's the way the nuclear operation was once it got started. The nuclear operation began with the arrival and spotting of the Los Alamos working trailer at the control point about a week before the arrival of the nuclear explosive. The week was spent in setting up and checking out the few pieces of equipment needed for the operation by the engineers. The checkouts included the manual firing system employed on this operation by Los Alamos to cut costs. On August 13th, 1969, just a year and four months after Los Alamos started design of the nuclear explosive, the package arrived on the site and the operation began in earnest. It was an uncomplicated one, consisting of three basic steps. Assembly of the device and its operating mechanism, which had been shipped in separate packages, emplacement of the device down hole and backfilling, and finally, firing. Here is the actual device. It will be mated in this white building with other components which contain firing leads and the control mechanism. The device has a safing mechanism which must be operated electrically before it can be fired. It is one of several positive safety features incorporated in the design of this Los Alamos device. The firing console also contains a safety feature. Two switches must be operated by different keys before the device can be fired. Another is the electrical connection to the nuclear package which is made at this point on the winch which lowers the device on a cable which also contains the firing cable. When the device is being lowered, this connection is broken and locked within this box. Most nuclear events call for a great many cables and large crews to handle them. But Los Alamos cut hard wire and personnel needs to the basic minimum for safely arming and firing the device. These cuts permitted the use of a double armored cable which we now see in cross-section. The cable was manufactured by United States Steel at the request of Los Alamos, and it served to lower the package as well as to carry electrical signals to fire the explosive. Patterned after well-logging cables, it was more than 10,000 feet in length and had a breaking strength of 38,000 pounds. Similar cables may be constructed to reach the 20,000 foot emplacement levels, which may be needed in some plowshare events. A special winch which is reusable, was required. On the morning of August 14th, the downhole operation began when the package was rolled out of the assembly shack and lifted into position over surface ground zero. Conspicuously missing is any sign of a cooling package. Los Alamos was able to design the explosive device to withstand the 220 degree Fahrenheit temperature expected downhole without having to add this complexity. Here again on this project, the Los Alamos crews were reduced to the minimum required to conduct a safe and efficient emplacement operation. Los Alamos believes strongly that a small team is safer, more efficient, and certainly more economical than a large one and the laboratory operates with a minimum number consistent with safe practices. That may be hard to believe from this look at the activities in which Los Alamos people are outnumbered by observers. Focus of their attention was the nuclear explosives package whose exterior appearance is unclassified. When the weight of the package was transferred to the downhole cable and winch, the lowering process was underway. Eight and one half hours later, the package was in place at the 8,400 foot level.
Next came the longest laboratory supervised operation of the project, backfilling. A small hopper and conveyor were required for this phase, which took 14 20 hour days to complete. This time consuming activity has no alternative, for the backfill materials, alternating coarse and fine sands, must be placed carefully so as not to jeopardize the project. Backfilling was accomplished in five minute work periods, sandwiched between five minute breathing intervals, during which no materials were placed down whole. This was to avoid entraining air, which could coalesce into large bubbles and allow sand to drop, thus placing a strain on the cables. The big day was September 10, 1969, and observers gathered near the information tent on a mesa 13 miles away to witness it. The weather was clear and the wind from the right direction. Clearance of the area began shortly after noon and permission to arm was given by the Atomic Energy Commission shortly before 3 p.m. Minutes later came permission to fire. The countdown was a simple one. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, fire. At ground zero, there was no evidence that anything happened. But here and there along Battlement Mesa, dust puffs kicked up by the shock gave evidence that the Los Alamos nuclear explosive had indeed gone off as scheduled. The Rulison event, of course, will not be a thing of the past until all the information derived from the experiment has been evaluated, including the gas production of the area as the result of the detonation. In the spring of 1970, approximately six months after the detonation, the Austral Oil Company will be drilling back into the zone of interest to start the evaluation of gas production. In the meanwhile, Los Alamos is going ahead with plans for other plowshare events in partnership with industry and focusing its efforts on providing safe, reliable, small diameter, temperature and pressure resistant nuclear explosives. <laughs>